Izzy, thanks so much for joining us. It's an honor to have you on. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be on and uh, yeah, looking forward. So, you know, the Super Bowl is all about champions and great people. And in fact, one of the players in the Super Bowl is a man named Tom Brady, who's considered to be the GOAT, the greatest of all time. My, my reports tell me that when it comes to Jewish barbecue, you're the GOAT. Is that true? Uh, give us a little bit about your barbecue a career, awards you've won. Who are we speaking to? Is that, from what I understand, it's the GOAT of barbecue. Um, so the first thing I'm going to address that is by, I, I don't think it's, it's fear for anybody to call himself the goat. You know, I think that's, that has to be you know, by other people. I, I don't think that's my, uh, priority or concern. Yeah, like, you know, my priority is to be a better person every day and try to be the best I could be. And as long as I'm improving, that's my only goal I have. And if it happens to be really good food or the best bar, bar you know, the, whatever people think, then, then that's okay by it. Um, as far as the achievements, which other people consider you su successful by, I guess that's, that's the standard. You know, we've won um, Brisket King, New York City, which is, you know, we, we've competed against the best smokehouses in New York. Um, the year before we came runner up, we also won Rip, Rip King in New York. Um, as long as we, and we had some, you know, really cool people, uh, you know, come by here. This store, we actually got to cook with somebody who name is Aaron Franklin, who, who uh, the name of his restaurant is called Franklin's Bar Barbecue. The reason why I mentioned this, because he is considered, when I tell you the GOAT or the greatest or the, the Rebbe, you know, he's somebody in Austin, Texas, Who's, who has lines uh, starting at 6 or 5 a.m. in the morning. People come from all over the world. They wait from 5 in the morning. They wait to eat his food, and he's only open for two hours for lunch. And um, he was one of the judges at uh, Brisket King, New York City, when we competed. He was sort of in awe that, you know, someone who hasn't tried ever, you know, what he's trying to emulate has ever ever tried it and was able to make a product like, like that was was in shock. And, and, you know, he knew that my dream was, you know, to, to, to try his food but not being able to try it. So we created a whole event, you know, a friend, me and Ari White, who's known as the Wandering Q, who's one of my inspirations as well to, to barbecue. Uh, we flew down to Austin. We brought some kosher br brisket over there. We cooked down a new smoker. And it was one of the most surreal experiences. It's almost like when people say they go to Uman. This is my Uman, in a sense, I would say. <laughs> so, so, you know, one of the things that is, is critical, and, and, you know, this is a Super Bowl show, but we all know that, you know, sports is, is really a metaphor for life. It's not about the ball. Um, Whenever you see someone who's achieving Baruch Hashem Hatzlacha in life, there, there, are, there are clues, there are reasons, there's, there's, there's principles that are behind the scenes. What are some of the ways that you approach barbecue, which is enabling you to achieve your success that you think are principles that we can learn from and how to become successful in anything that we're doing in life? So I, I always tell younger people when they ask me, you're, you know, when, 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 I'm, when I'm honored enough and they ask me for, for my advice, uh, which I tell them is only advice, it's not factual. People always are very quick to say that you can't do something or it's too hard or it's too, too this. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to look at yourself in the mirror every day. And, and you're, you're the one who creates, you know, your clean, you know, as you know, like, you know, your job is to make a clean life, you know, and, and obviously, and it's, your, and it's your job, you know, within that to do, to do the best you can to achieve what you want and the rest is up to God. But if you're not going to go ahead and make that effort and put that effort in, you know, it's, you know, like, you know, I'm sure you heard of the, the muscle. They say that, you know, the guy, you know, the guy goes to the Arun and he begs that he should win, you know, the ticket, he should win the lottery. And Hashem answers eventually like, listen, you have to buy the ticket in order for you to win. Right. right. So it's the same thing. I think it's about, you know, putting in hard work, you know, it's about, you know, committing yourself. I don't think you're owed anything in life. You know, no one owes you anything. People have it way harder than you as bad as you think you have it. And, you know, put, you know, put in the effort, surround yourself with, with good people is the second thing I would say, you know, you are the four or five people you hang around with. That's, that's who you are. That's who you hang around with. And, right. and if those people are, are good, good people or people who you could lock up to or people who could help you in life, you know, that's going to be a big part of your success. But again, like, don't, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do anything, you know, especially for me, you know, I had no experience in the food industry before. And I had, honestly had no idea what I'm doing. And looking back at what I was doing, I didn't think pretty much that was, was, was insane, but I look back at it, Back then, going into the industry that I don't know anything about, the hardest industry pretty much to go into, which is food. And I am not going to say that, you know, I, you know we're, we're successful because we're open up for, for you know, six years almost. And I'm no by any means rich, but I'm happy to go to work every day. And, you know, you know I, I say the biggest thing for somebody when they want to either change a career or something is that I look forward to Tuesday and Wednesday like I do Shabbos and Sunday. And if, and if you dread going to work on Monday or Tuesday, you're doing something wrong. Obviously, some people have no choice to have a family to support. But for me, you know, I'm very lucky. It's the some people I got to meet and yeah, for, talk, fortunate talk, and blessed. Talk to me about the detail. You know, when you look around the champions, you know, I, I spent some time studying people that have achieved success. It's a hobby of mine. 
um, I always find that they have this incredible ability to stick into the detail. They're, they're not going to, you know, they're not overseeing. They're, they're, trying to, they're, they're trying to get particular and trying to talk to me about that in barbecue, in your field. But what you do to, without having to go into the details of, 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 of the process, but how important is it for you that, that every detail works? Yeah, so a, a big reason why that in kosher there haven't been a lot of smokehouses that have been trying to em emulate me or I mean tried because just the effort like I could tell you in a very short simple like we have to get in a very high quality expensive pe pe piece of meat that meat has to be now inspected that meat has to be seasoned that meat has to go in a smoker now for 18 hours you have a 20 minute window where from after the 18 hours to, to pull it out where it's at that perfect temperature if you pull it too early it's not good if you pull it too late it's dry then that has to go into a warmer in the morning and has to be good for service for dinner. Then someone has to carve it, has to make sure that that piece is good. There's so many processes along the way that if you're passionate and you're not meticulous about the process, it. it's going to show on the product versus in other industries or other businesses or other foods. It's not like that. You know, McDonald's is more of an operation, which I commend them. And I wish I could learn that one day, but there's too much meticulous, um, you know, details going on that if you try to skip it, it's going to show out on the product. And ultimately, you know, really just, it's about, hard work for my team and I, and, and I'm very fortunate that, that family's involved and helps me out. It's just a hard process. And if yeah. you're going to try to do shortcuts, people are going to tell. That's exactly right. That, that, and, and, and it's exactly right. The process, the understanding, the process, and the details of the process is what makes the, the people that have been, the, the Rebbe is, if you will, I think goat, Rebbe is like our version of the goat. It, what, what makes people that have achieved success successful is what you just said, is the idea that you have to be mindful of the process, be detailed and understand that success is particular. You got to hit it at the right time. And, and, and you have to fail. And, and you, have you have to, to fail. fail a billion times. You have to fail and learn, man. I, I think like, like, I think there, there's also, there's a misconception that if you fail in life, you know, that you're a loser. I'm like, ultimately the, the, the greatest people, you know, uh, you know, historians in the world or whatever it is like, yeah. Exp like, how, did, how did someone older, Give you that knowledge that 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 something was a mistake or something wasn't wrong. It's by the mistakes that people made, sure. and that's how we learn. So the idea is that you want to you know you know, over and over and, and try and, and totally. fail and make sure it doesn't hurt you too much. And you got to learn from that. Totally. And that's it. And get knowledge. Let me ask you a question. What is it? Do you think about barbecue? Everyone seems to love barbecue. You know, you walk into someone's house and someone's like, "Hey, let's barbecue." And I was like, "That that that's amazing." Like, it's something about the what is it about barbecue that seems to be this great unifier uh, from all types of people? You know what? It's it's one of the only things in the world I would say that goes back to when you know when man was first created. That you know, how did the person eat when they first created? They made a fire. They 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 grilled some meat. That part of you know cooking with fire has gone down from generate you know right. till now. And that hasn't changed. Right. So that's just a, that, that's something that burns with inside somebody, you know? So just people, you know, correspond to that versus other stuff is like new and, and you know, gimmicky and, and, and different. And on top of that, you know, when you, when you put in, when you see somebody else put in that effort or that passion into something you make, just people get excited over it. Like, you know, like just even let's say yeah. with, with Italian pizza, you see somebody making Neapolitan pizza, you know, wood fired oven, their dough. It's like, you almost, you're getting excited with the person, you know, what they're doing the process. People sort of, you know, could, could relate to that. Yeah, I totally hear that. Now, as as a Hasidic Jew, give me give me if you can a little bit of the spiritual side of what you do. Do you have? Do you ever think? So first about, of all, I'm not Hasidic. I'm Jewish, like everybody else. Hundred uh, percent. I don't I don't like using that word. I'm, I'm so, Jewish. So let me let me ask the question again. Uh, as 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 a Jew, do you do you have a spiritual vision? Uh, let me say it one more time. As a Jew, do you have a spiritual lens on what you're doing? Well, I always say, say, say it as a joke. I think it's funny that I happen to be a, a, a kain and I have a, a smokehouse that, that, that I run. So I think that's, <laughs> that's funny. Um, but I, I think if this always resonates with me, um, this one specifically, is that I'm, I'm a simple guy and uh, I hustle. I'm not really, you know, I don't learn every day. You know, yeshiva necessarily wasn't for me. I couldn't sit down. I was too wild to be tamed. I wanted to go out. I wanted to run around. It, was, it wasn't necessarily for me. However, I will say that um, one of the greatest satisfactions that we get here is that when people come to you know to our store right and they tell us that you know you know until you know i've had non-kosher before and Jewish people and this is literally better than uh, i've had before and the fact that they're now knowing that they could eat a kosher meal instead instead of having them to feel like they have to go eat trafe to eat uh you know to, to fulfill their needs or their you know their cra cra cravings whatever you want to say and the fact that they come here and they're able to eat kosher i feel like you know that's my mission and that's one of the few small things that i could do really you know getting getting more people to eat uh kosher food really Amazing. And not feel like they're lacking anything. 
So, so as people prepare for the Super Bowl, there'll be those people that are going to barbecue. Do you have any tips that you can give to, I don't know, what they can do that's a little bit different this year than they haven't done before? Um, it's a very general term, you know, you know what people consider bar- barbecue and grilling. So I would say the most, I, I wouldn't say it pertains to any style, style food. It's like, don't get caught up with, uh, with the anxiety of having to prepare meat on time. I think just making sure that if you're, you know, it should be an enjoying thing. You're bar- barbecuing with the family, with friends, and it shouldn't be very stressful. Enjoy, you know, life's too short. You know, don't go plan for a week and then, you know, Sunday the, the game comes, you're all burnt out and not being able to enjoy yourself. Just whatever you do, make it simple. Make sure you're having fun. And, and really that's it. As far as what you want to grill, it's really, you know, whatever you, you know, it's all up to you really, you know, whether you want to keep it simple with wings or chicken. You know, go crazy with steak or with a brisket, uh, you know, smoking 18 hours, which I don't know if I recommend. You'll be too tired when the game starts. But it's all about enjoying the process because ultimately, if you're not going to, it's not going to be enjoy the process. You're not going to grill again. You're not going to bar- bar- barbecue. And, 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 you know, it's supposed to be one of the things that you enjoy sitting down, you know, um, with a kumzit style, you know, with friends and enjoy. If it's not that, then, um, then I don't see what, what's the point really. Do you have any like special like sauces or or uh, spices that you know you have in your back pocket that no one knows Honestly, about? No, we're simple, man. Like our brisket and ribs is uh, you know salt, pepper, and paprika. I, I don't hide it. You know our we you know Great. for for us we let the meat do all the talking in our process and and it's, you know I always tell somebody if he likes you know other flavor profiles whether it's you know garlic, brown sugar, some other you know crazy chili, good for you. You know, but for us, it's all about the meat, you know, you know, that's people also should get caught in the details that I have a crazy secret rub. It's, at the end of the day, it's the process. It's the high quality meat. It's the process that you're doing. And all the, all that along the way is much more crucial than what specific spice rub that you think that you have a secret, really. That's not, right. you know, and it's all, again, uh, it's just that we're, we're, we're a simple operation that we just, you know, it's about, you know, they, they always say about, you know, what makes a player a Hall of Fame player? You know, what do they say? You know, you, you could have the greatest player the, with the most talented player ever, but if he can't, you know, show up to games because he's injured or anything, he's not available. You know, the whole thing about being a Hall of Fame player is about being consistent. And if you're, if you're consistent throughout, if you're averagely consistent throughout your career, you can make it to that. And the same thing with the restaurant, with any other business, it's like if you're able to be consistent and deliver a good product every day, which is a very hard thing to do. And, you know, we don't do it every day. We try our best, but about being consistent and, and being able to wake up every day and trying to make a good product, you know, that, that's hard. And that's what we try, we try, try to do, being consistent. Amazing. How do people find you? Um, you can find us at our website, Izzy's uh, smokehouse.com. We have Instagram, Izzy's BBQ. If anybody on, on this chat has any questions, they could email me at the Izzy at Izzy's smokehouse.com. Uh, Feel free to any questions. I may not answer right, right away, but, um, yeah, we're all over social media, Instagram, Facebook, our website, you know, call the store. We're actually opening up a location in the next few weeks, the Upper West Side as well. Awesome. Um, so we're excited for that. And yeah. Okay. Izzy, thanks for being part of us. We appreciate you being on the show. Continue doing what you're doing and continue shining your light on this world, man. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Have a great day and an awesome Shabbos and a great Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. For more content, like and subscribe and be sure to tune in live every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern at theshabbatshow.com or right here on YouTube.